Mr. Chief Justice. The Senator from Georgia. I send a question to the desk for the President's counsel on behalf of myself, Senator Ernst and Senator Brasso. Thank you. The question from Senator Perdue, Ernst, and Barrasso, uh, for counsel for the president, is as follows. Please summarize the House of Representatives' three-stage investigation and how the president was denied due process in each stage. Combined with Manager Schiff's repeated leaks during the House's investigation, do these due process violations make this impeachment the fruit of the poisonous tree? Mr. Chief Justice, Senators, thank you for that question. And the, the short answer, as I think I've indicated a couple of the times that I've been up here, is yes, this entire proceeding here is now the fruit of the poisonous tree. It is the fruit of a proceeding that was fatally deficient in due process from the start to the beginning. And as a result of that, it produced a record that is totally unreliable can't be relied on here for any conclusion other than acquitting the president. And let me detail the three phases. First, the first error was that the House began the proceeding in a totally unconstitutional, unlawful, and illegitimate manner. It started an impeachment inquiry without any vote of the House to authorize that inquiry. And I want to spend a second on this because the House managers have spent a lot of time today trying to go back and argue about why their proceeding was all right, but they're, they're not actually engaging the real issues. In order for the House to exercise the power of impeachment, there has to be a delegation of that authority to a committee. That's just a fundamental principle that the Constitution gives power to the House itself, not to individual members of the House, not to the Speaker. Just as here in the Senate, you wouldn't think that the majority leader could say if an impeachment arrived, the majority leader could say, guess what, we're not going to do a trial with the whole Senate. I, the majority leader, am going to just decide that I'm going to have one committee hear the evidence, provide a summary, and then you all can vote. The majority leader doesn't have the authority on his own to do that. The Speaker doesn't have the authority in the House to give the power of impeachment to any committee to start pursuing an inquiry. And this is the key. There is no rule giving any committee in the House the authority to use the power of impeachment. Rule 10 speaks of legislative authority, not the power of impeachment. And all the subpoenas that were issued came with letters saying on them, pursuant to the House's impeachment inquiry, they purported to be using a power that hadn't actually been delegated to the committee. That's the first flaw. Illegitimate, unlawful proceeding from the start. Then there are the due process flaws. Three stages of hearings. One, secret hearings in the basement bunker. President's locked out. No opportunity to cross-examine witnesses, to see the evidence, to present evidence. And then they go from that to the public hearings, which really just a public show trial, because the president is still cut out, totally unprecedented in any presidential impeachment, that there would be that second phase of public hearings where the president is still cut out, can't present evidence. The minority members don't have equal subpoena authority. The third phase in front of the House Judiciary Committee, they purport to have offered rights, but I've explained that. It was illusory because they had already decided before the President was, even was supposed to respond with what rights he would like to exercise, the Speaker had announced the result. There were going to be articles of impeachment. The Judiciary Committee had decided they weren't going to hear from any fact witnesses. They had no plans for hearings. It was all a foregone conclusion because they had to get it done by Christmas. And the third error, that Chairman Schiff was in charge of all the fact-finding. And he had an interest, because of the interactions of his office with the whistleblower that we still don't know about, to shut down questioning about the motive, the bias, 
the, the reasons that the whistleblower, how this all came about. All three of those errors infected this process from the very beginning. They resulted in a one-sided, slanted fact-finding that was rushed by a person controlling the fact-finding who had a motive to limit what facts would be allowed to get into the proceedings. And it produced a record that cannot possibly be relied on here. We've said many times, the Supreme Court has made clear that cross-examination is the greatest legal engine ever invented for the discovery of truth, and they didn't permit the President the opportunity to cross-examine anyone. And that's an indication that the goal was not a search for the truth. It was a partisan charade intended to justify a preordained result and to get it done by Christmas. And it's not a record that can be relied on here. Thank you.